Atticus Poetry? The full name is Atticus. How, how do you like to be called here? My last name's Poetry. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, 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 I mean, a- Atticus is, is great. Okay, Atticus. Yeah. Uh, I want to get into everything, the nature of why that's not actually your name. Uh, I want to get yeah. into the nature of poetry. I want to get into the nature of business and all this stuff. But since we were already starting to talk about Elon Musk, <laughs> let's start talking about Elon Musk a little bit here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now, you've, you've, you know Elon, correct? Yeah, yeah, I know Elon really well. We've been we've been friends for for a long time, um, which yeah. is insane to say. You know, the, you know, our, one of the richest men in the world. You know, he would say he's not, but yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of articles would say he is. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I knew him before he was like famous and before he was getting that rich. I, I kind of met him um, PayPal days. Mm. I I first met his brother Kimball, yeah, and Kimball and I just became fast friends. I think from like. A natural, uh, you know, love of sarcasm, uh, and and Monty Python we connected on, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, just became friends with with the whole family and have been really close with with Elon and stuff. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah we were that we were just talking about that BBC interview. So I don't I don't know when this episode <laughs> comes out. It's so yeah. good because <laughs> I mean Elon like the guy is basically aggressively asking these questions like why did you fire everyone you know yeah. all these people at Twitter yeah. he's like the company was going to go under in four months. What would you do? Yeah. It was, it was brilliant. Yeah. Um, but he, but he was also like, you know, if you, if you haven't seen it, uh, a BBC reporter just shows up to yep. Twitter headquarters and oh, asks, I know that's the background yeah, that. he asks for an interview with Elon and, and Elon's, uh, like, believe it or not, just accepted Does it. Does that work? And Can I go? Sure. <laughs> I'm going right now. Let's go. Not. I'm sure people are trying after <laughs> that one. And then, like, I love the I love the balls of that, though. Like, I know that, that's it is it's definitely ballsy. Yeah, but, you don't you, know. you don't ask for. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's kind of impressive. Yeah, but you know, he he ends up asking E like, uh, he's like, you know, I think that that Twitter's gotten worse, and there's so much more hate and on yeah. and everything on there, and and he you know he was just like, well, you know, what are you talking about specifically? It's like, is it measurable? Have have you done a study? And the guy just was just kind of like lost in his shoes. Mm-hmm. And then he went all like, <laughs> I think you're lying, sir. <laughs> it, was it was entertaining. I mean, yeah, because yeah. he, uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I I liked Elon a lot before, and then when I saw that, I was like, man, he can handle himself on an interview, like, yeah, real like defend himself really well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my respect went up even more, which I didn't know was possible. So, yeah, I mean, what's it, what's he like in real life? I mean, is is he? Uh, all um, business, all fun. Like, where do you see that? I mean, you you kind of see see both. He's he's very business when he when he's business. I mean, he works. You know, the, at the end of the day, he cares about these things so passionately, and he works so hard, like the hardest that I've ever you know that I've seen anybody work. Um, because he wants to like he wants to change the climate of the world. He wants to make humans interplanetary because he has an actual risk in his, you know, he's at, or he's, he's actually worried that humans are going to kill themselves mm-hmm. yeah. and that the, the way to solve that in, in his mind is to make people interplanetary, humans interplanetary, which is, yeah. you know, and like, obviously, you know, he gets a lot of flack and, and, um, no one's, no one's perfect, but he is, he's very pure to purpose and, and he's also just like a, a regular regular guy when you're just hanging. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, I know he's been one of the more outspoken people against AI recently. Yeah, right? he's very nervous about that. I know you play in the AI space a little bit, and you, you're yeah. familiar with it. We've had conversations about some of the yeah. crazy AI uh, stuff. Yeah, what's what, is he justified? Do you think he's justified for that AI is going to destroy us potentially if we're not careful? Yeah, I I mean, I think we have to be really careful. L- you know, at the end of the day, I, 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 I won't say that, like, I know why it's going to happen. And, you know, I certainly have seen Terminator and all yeah, that. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> like, um, you know, things coming self-aware, like AI becoming self-aware. But, you know, enough people that I find insanely intelligent mm-hmm. and, and know a lot more about this stuff than I do um, have, have, like, voiced real concerns, you know, and, you know, just just told the world we need to be really wary of this. And my little brother actually started, you know, basically started the, the AI department at Cambridge and, and, oh, and really? he's a professor um, of AI ethics at Cambridge University in I England. Didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just fascinating to talk with him and, and um, hear, you know, his, his concerns and then hear people like Elon's and, and um, you know, friends like that. But there, 
there's just a real concern and it, and it's, we got to treat it with, um, um, in their opinion, you know, a great amount of respect and you can see it ha- happening. So, you know, already it's yeah. like, how fast is this stuff iterating? It's yeah. like, you know, we'll, you know, we're on <laughs> chat GTP, like 12 already. You know? It's like, it just keeps, yeah. And then we got the, the, yeah, a, the agent crazy. thing that just in the last like week, I, I haven't been following that closely, but also now they got these you know, chat agents, whatever that can go and like do even more and they can search the internet and make reservations. And then oh, yeah. you just give them like a solu- a problem to solve. They'll like go solve it. It's not just like even asking or having a reason anymore. Now it's like they are taking like way more steps and then they opened up their API for like plugins so that like other companies, it's just, it's just wild how fast now it's, um, it's iterating. Uh, you know, a friend was, um, was believe it or not talking to Obama, like had a chance to talk to Obama. And one of the things Obama was saying was he's worried about AI. Mm. And, you know, he was saying that because of the ability to deep fake someone, just basically, yeah. you know, uh, create a video that looks exactly like him saying, you know, fake news. And yeah. this is like, you can make Trump say whatever you can make, you can make anyone say whatever. Yeah. And the, and the other interesting thing is like, the like Jay-Z songs that are coming out yeah. and the Joe Rogan podcast that yep. came out and all of it's fake. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. There's you could have a, a Brandon Turner, like <laughs> fake podcast. In yeah. Fact, anybody do could, <laughs> uh, this is not an invitation for people, but anybody could actually now take upload my voice. Have you heard, have you played with 11 labs? No. Program? So 11 labs is this AI thing that where you upload your own voice, like an hour or half hour, whatever to it. And then it will read, uh, it'll read whatever you tell it to read in your voice. And it's, perfect in fact uh stetson are you around all right well if you see stetson stetson uh, or even alex i texted you and stetson and matt back up maybe two months ago with a file of me reading an article about duplex would you want to shoot that to me on a text and i'll play it here and if you can if you can find it in your voice in my voice you saying it yeah so i went to chat gpt and i had it uh, i said write me an article about um uh, buying a duplex. Yeah. And so then I wrote an article. I can even say now I write it in the style of Brandon Turner. I don't think I did, but you can do write in the style of Brandon <sighs> Turner and it knows my writing and it will then write it in my, in my style. Then I uploaded that to this 11 labs and I also uploaded an hour of me talking like some YouTube video and then it read it in my voice. And like, you can't like almost, you almost can't tell. I mean, if I didn't tell you ahead of time, you would not know. Wow. Uh, so the crazy the crazy thing that's going to do, and I've been seeing people just the last two weeks now on, online saying families now need like passwords. Like, cause I mean, you can now get a phone call. Like I could call you Whoa. as Elon and say, you know, Hey Atticus, you know, <laughs> what you like? like I'd be like, Hey, can you do me a favor and send me, can you wire me, you know, a thousand bucks? Yeah. I got a cool opportunity. I'm going to wire you back 10,000. And then Whoa. you can actually, you could, you would then respond to him with your voice and he could, the person on the other line could then, respond as Elon again to you and you can have a full conversation with somebody that's not actually the person you think it is and you would not know I mean you know that's why this is terrifying yeah it's terrifying (laughs) like right now like do you find it oh that's it yeah let me find it Uh, let's see if this plays it Um, buying a duplex can be a great investment (laughs) Buying a duplex can be a great investment opportunity, providing you with a steady stream of rental income and the potential for appreciation over time. What? However, it is important to approach the process with caution. Yeah, completely wild. Yeah, it's like this 11 labs is is unbelievable. Whoa. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's interesting. Um, It's it's all fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Yeah, and and like you know, like we, we were saying, it's it the fa- how fast it's how fast is crazy. it is. I how do you see you you know we're, we haven't gotten into the poetry side of things. Like yeah. you're famous for being <laughs> unfamous and as a poet, we'll get into all that. But as somebody who makes their living largely off of your creative output, your words that you write that you put out there, how do you view? Uh, AI in that because AI could write. In fact, while you're answering this question, I'm going to ask Chat GPT to write a poem in the style of Atticus and see what it does. But yeah, how yeah. do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's interesting. It's like you know the the art's going to change very quickly, and and writing's going to change, and uh, um and, and um it, it's just interesting. I, I'm like, I'm 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 kind of like open to it i think you know we've always had things throughout history of of like art changing and you know the inventing of like digital music i think people are really against and i think it'll just be you know i think there'll always be you know you hope like a a space for human to like be 
different and creative. But uh, I mean, if you've used Mid Journey or any of these things, it's it's pretty impressive. And I, I've I've like played around with Atticus on chat, yeah. um, and I feel like it hasn't quite nailed it. But I agree. You know, I'm looking next, at the one that's generated right now. I know now. it like it's rhymes a lot, yep. and it's like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, not quite there, but it's getting really close. Yeah, what I would love to do is maybe I'll try this later. Is I want to upload, like, because you can you can submit now, like, read the following 18 poems. I can upload your poetry write to it or give it to yeah. it and then say now rewrite me another one in that style oh cool and now that's what we gotta try yeah yeah we can try that because yeah this one came in the realm of midnight stars beside the moon's sweet crescent hue lies a heart that beats afar and everlasting love so true that is not you I mean like that, <laughs> that's not nothing quite, like you I don't think I've ever rhymed yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is funny like, let's let's talk a little bit about that then I'm gonna actually yeah. pull your up your Instagram here real quick um, but your your poems are when I think of poetry I think of like rhyming yeah. like roses are red violets are blue <laughs> oh, yeah so uh, it's or yeah yours i mean let me just read off a couple of these like this one a lot of them are romantic especially because the last book was called how do you say it it's l-v-o-e not, l-v-o-e it's yeah. not love but it's yeah. spelled okay <laughs> so my love you have and it's like the way it's written too i wish people would see this right but it, my love you have too many smiles left in you to be so sad it's like people might say well that's not poetry that's not rhyming like yeah. what what is that well, I mean, I think it's like, you know, I think I get clumped in with poetry, but like sure. how I started like so, so many years ago is, is I used to like love entering caption com- competitions. Like mm. I've always loved just playing with words and I, I loved short form stuff, you know, like epigrams and aphorisms and, um, I'd read poets, but you know, I, I was obsessed with just like beautiful quotes from literature and, um, that's kind of how I, I started. And I, um, I started writing them down one day and, and it, it, it was just short form. Cause that's just how my mind worked and how I wanted to, you know, like the beautiful thing about a short poem is if you move one word, the whole thing kind of changes. Mm. And, um, I loved trying to say a lot with a little, um, and it was just, it was just honestly just a creative outlet at first. And I never expected it to be anything or any, it to resonate with anyone but uh, it does. And there's something powerful about just li- like, let me read one more here. It says, uh, I could read a lot of these, but some things in life, like some people are not meant to be fully understood. So for now it's best we call them miracles. Like that's Oh my God. That's cool. I like that. Right. Or like, uh, I got one other one. I really like this one. Um, she was that kind of friend that after one drink would have you signing up for hip hop classes, ordering bottles of tequila, uh, to other people's tables and planning how to move to France. Like there's something that resonates in people when they read that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's honestly like the, the simplest thing that makes you think of something. It's like, you know, we all have that friend who, yeah. you know, you have the friends who, who en- <laughs> encourage you to, <laughs> to get a good night's sleep. And then you have the friend who comes into town and they're, you know, ordering tequila yeah. shots at other people's tables. And it's just like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I have a friend like that. And it's just, I think that's, you know, the, it, the reason one it's like i've said it's a gateway like my stuff's kind of like gateway to to like classic literature it's mm. like you know um my my only hope is that people would like get a get a see something that they made sense resonated and then it would encourage them to kind of go into the, like the mary olivers and the bukowskis and the you know what mm. i say are true poets yeah <laughs> you know yeah and people have tattooed this your stuff on their bodies right i mean that's a yeah thing. yeah they have which was which was very like uh shocking at yeah. first <laughs> and i was like oh god they don't post <laughs> these things at night and i'm like don't always worry about the grammar too, yeah, too much yeah. you know i'm like uh, i hope the comma is in the right yeah. place <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah that's wild man i mean uh and, and obviously it resonates i mean you're sitting at like, where yeah like on instagram anyway is that your main thing yeah, 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 mostly on Yeah, 1.6 million followers, three times New York Times bestselling author. Uh, is it three times? Uh, I've got four what bestsellers have, now. Yeah, yeah three say, New York man, Times. That's that's wild. Um, man, how did you get into that? <laughs> you know, it's interesting because um, I, I definitely didn't grow up thinking I'm going to be a poet when yeah. I grow up. Um, it was probably that rhyme. F- did you mean that to rhyme? <laughs> yeah. Poet Maybe I just rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I just do it subconsciously. You can't help it. I can't man. help it. You are born to yeah. be a poet. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I grew up in, in Canada and it was like the, you know, the, I think where, where guys are encouraged, not, you know, traditionally years ago. And I think it's a problem with, with Canada, but you know, you're, you're encouraged not to be kind of yeah. too artsy and things. And that's changing now, thankfully. But, um, 
you know, I uh, I went on a on a trip to France, and um, I met this through a friend. Met this actor named Michael Madsen, who, if you don't know who that is, was he the dad in Free Willy? Yes, yeah, yes. and the bad guy in Kill Bill yeah, yeah. and Reservoir Dogs and things. <laughs> I and love that I go to Free Willy, you yeah. go to Reservoir Dogs. You know, shows the type of movies we're currently watching. It. Yeah. <laughs> he's also the bad guy in a in a Justin Bieber music video. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a legit actor. Anyway, so you met him. Yeah, you know, and, and I just found him fascinating, and and um, you know, being Reservoir Dogs with you know, yeah. Tar- you know, Tarantino and and things, but um, uh, he told me that about his struggles with with alcohol addiction and and just like growing up in Hollywood, and and he told me that um, he just put out this book, uh, a book of poetry, and and that poetry had saved his life, and for me that was like wow, you know, here's an American badass who's telling me that, um, writing poetry saved his life. And, you know, it was, it was two, two weeks later, I was, I was in Paris for, um, maybe the first time. And I just wrote, saw something I thought was beautiful and decided to write it down and the rest kind of, yeah. So how, okay. well, I know, how did you go then from, I mean, you're writing some poetry yeah, all the way up to I've got a New York Times bestseller <laughs> on poetry. I mean, yeah. like, did you just start giving it to your friends and family, throw it on the internet? Where'd that go? Um, you know, I, um, I, I'm like, I love kind of like, uh, old school things. So I like, I had a typewriter at home and I would just write these things down on my phone. And then I was like, I'll type them up on my typewriter. And I typed them up on my typewriter and I was like, I'll take a photo of it. And, uh, and like Instagram was honestly just starting at that point. And so I was like, I'll just post them on Instagram and I'll, I'll do it under a pseudonym, you know, so it doesn't kind of like, you know, bleed into the rest of my life. I'll, I'll just do it anonymously. And, um, I d- didn't expect it to grow. I honestly just thought it would, um, it would just be like a place for me to like meet other art, you know, poets and writers and just like share ideas and things and, uh, and a creative outlet for me. And, and, and it was that, but it was also people started following and then celebrities started, you know, posting about it and people started getting it tattooed and then tens of thousands of people got it tattooed and it was all kind of, um, it just kind of happened. And then, uh, you know, in, into that, I think I was probably at like a hundred thousand followers and a book agent reached out to me and was mm. like, if you ever thought about doing a book, um, she literally just DM'd me <laughs> and I was like, um, yeah, maybe that sounds kind of cool. Um, and we just explored it, shopped it around and, and ended up landed on a, on a great publisher and yeah, I guess then the rest was history. Yeah. Okay. There we <laughs> go. All right. So why, why anonymous? I mean, this yeah. podcast obviously filmed a little different for those watching it on YouTube where yeah. we're hiding you a little bit because, yeah, you, you're not, look at me, look at me. <laughs> it's because I'm horrible to look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one way of saying it. Yeah. If people are probably like, he must be just horribly disfigured. Yeah. He's not, everyone. He's not. <laughs> yeah, the hunchback. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, I, I think it, it was a few things. I, I think when I first started out I, I think I was like ultimately shy about writing being a, a guy writing poetry yeah. and um, you know I I so I did it anonymously and and um, as it kind of started to grow uh, something happened where I kind of doubled down on this whole idea I basically reached a fork in the road um, and you know the thing that happened was a friend of mine who was um, from the same small island I'm from in Canada um, he happened to be like quite famous and um, very famous. He was on like one of the biggest shows on, on television and he um, died on a, in a hotel mm-hmm. in Vancouver of, you know, what I would call complications of fame. And, and it, it really rattled um, like myself and some other, like many others. Um, and I, and so I, you know, I reached this place where I was like, you know, I could, I could take off the mask. This was early days. And I was like, I could t- come out, take off the mask and, and probably be famous or I could, um, remain anonymous and keep it about the words and, and really try to distance myself from the fame, but still try to spread, you know, this, um, art for lack of a better word. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's fascinating. And then by doing so, it actually makes it almost more intriguing because it's <laughs> like, Oh, like, I don't know who this person is. Like it, I, yeah, there's almost a, a, a mystery to it. Like when you have a, a mystery, uh, uh, a secret admirer and, and then you just find out it's like Bob from the hardware store you're like oh well, it's just Bob but before it's Bob you don't know and so you're like oh who could it be uh, have you seen that family guy it's like yeah where he's like uh, alright you can hide you can have $10,000 
or you can have what's in the box. <laughs> and it's like, I'll take what's in the box. It could be anything. It could be $10,000. <laughs> well, I think it was a boat, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, yeah so it, it clearly is, is working. Um, yeah, I mean, it certainly makes things more difficult. <laughs> There's yeah, yeah, been yeah. some times where I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is so annoying. And, and the, you know, my agents and my publisher and, you know, um, will always be like, hey, what about taking off the mask? You could like, you know, do some like, you know, you could do the Today Show yeah. uh, or, you know, whatever. Um, and it's just like, you know, showing up to this podcast and being like, okay, how can we film it where it's just not showing yeah. my face? Um um, but you know, and, and, you know, I'm not sacred about it and it, it's changing, but for me, it's, it's just out of principle. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, saying to, to this person who passed away in my past and it's like saying, Hey, you know, like, let's do, let's do this. Let's, let's go as far as we can without being recognized. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I've, I've seen, have you heard the, the quote by I, Bill Murray who says, if you want to become rich and famous, become rich first and then see if you still want to be famous. Mm, yeah. Um, and, and Jim Carrey's got one that's kind of like that. Uh, you may have, may yeah, have heard something it. like, what is it? Like everyone wants to be rich and famous. Yeah. I hope get, everybody yeah. becomes yeah, yeah, rich yeah. and famous. So yeah. they realize that's not what they yeah. were looking for. Um, and like, you know, listen, I think it's, um, it's a double edged sword and it can, it can give you great, uh, podium and it can give you this incredible experience. You know, there's really amazing, cool things about fame for sure, but there's also, um, a negative side and it's just being, you know, I just challenge people to be, to be, um, really aware of that, of both those sides, yeah. you know? Yeah. There is a, uh, there's a pull toward the ego, uh, in a negative way. Uh, meaning like when, when people, I mean, people tell me all the time, right? Like, Oh, you changed my life or I read your book and I bought this property and like, and I hear it. I mean, all the time. Yeah. Uh, totally. And you start to, be, like, if I'm not careful, I'll start yeah. to believe it. Yeah. Right. And then, and that's when it's dangerous when you start believing your own hype. And, yeah. and I feel that pull like towards like, yeah, you're a, you're, you're all, like, it's almost like there's that great, um, story. I think it was Marcus Aurelius or one of them, the emperors would hire a guy to go yeah. behind him, right. And whisper, you're just a man. Yeah. Yeah. You're just a man. A mentor. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. Cause otherwise you're, there's this, yeah, temptation to start man, thinking yeah. you're, which happens, I'm sure, a lot. I mean, you have a lot of, uh, like, Elon's not your only celebrity friend. Like, you've got a lot of people in your life that I'm always amazed. I'm just like, you're the most connected person I've ever known. <laughs> <And> so, like, <laughs> ha, like, do you see that? Do you see that the the fame affecting people? I mean, you have to call people out, but, like, you, you see their personalities change in a negative way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can see it um, happen so quickly and particularly when it when it's young people um and it's it's pretty scary you know and i think you, it, it's kind of like you start believing your own hype and yep. then you, you you end up surrounding people that kind of reinforce that and then you create this like bubble of of this reinforcement and it's like neg or it's positive reinforcement but it's it's not true necessarily yeah. um and it's kind of you know it can be pretty pretty scary um you know, I, I met, so, and he wouldn't mind me talking about this, but you know, Sean Mendez, yeah. he, he's, um, he's a good friend and I met him, he came to LA and he came over and he's like, you know, I'm just about to pitch this, you know, I'm meeting the label and, um, I blew up on Vine and, um, whatnot. And, you know, sure enough, he's become one of the biggest um, stars in the world. And it's been just interesting to see him, um, as just this regular Canadian Toronto kid, um, go through this huge, tra you know, transformation of fame and see how it's affected him. And he, he's done s such a good job of, of keeping, you know, close, good people around him. And, you know, we, we were talking to him the other day and, and he's doubled downing on just like, what is the good I can bring to the world now? Yeah. He's like, I, you know, I've done the rock star stuff and, um, I'll continue doing music, but like, what's the good I can do in the world? And it's, it's just fascinating. It's, you know, those are the people that I think, you know, um, do well long-term. It's yeah. like the people that want to use their power for good and not evil. And, and they just like, they want to be happy more than they want to be famous. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. In a similar, um, kind of a similar type of a person is, uh, Justin Bieber. Yeah. Right. Cause he, you can see it. Yeah. Right? Cause he, cause he went 
off the deep end for a while totally. and then came back. And mm-hmm. I like of all the people I want on this show, like I've got, you know, kind of my dream list of people, but like Arnold Schwarzenegger's like out there Amazing. and Justin Bieber's on there. It's yeah. like those guys, like I'm like, I would love, and people might laugh at that. Like, why do you want the Biebs on your, because I, I want to hear that yeah. story. Yeah. Of like losing it. And then closely related to, to Justin uh, Bieber is to go back to the, getting fed the ego stuff all the time is like all the Christian like church pastors yeah. who continually fall into like cheating on their spouse. Yeah. Cause they're just told all the time how amazing they are. And the rock, I mean, it's, it's rock stars. It's the musicians, yeah. the actors, the, they get told you're incredible. You're awesome. Yeah. And the church pastors, you're yeah. incredible. You're changing my life. Yeah. I That's, am pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> I think I do deserve it. It's almost yeah. like, like deserving thing. Like I do deserve, you yeah. know, like a little bit more attention. And, yeah. And you also kind of like, you, you, you get addicted to those like little dopamine yes. spikes. Yep, hundred percent. And once you know if they're not there long enough, you're like, okay, I need to, I need to do my next yeah. hit. <laughs> I need to like put out the next show. I need to like whatever it is. And yeah, uh, yeah, it gets dangerous for yeah, sure. It definitely does. So, um, all right. So on the show, we uh, have a show sponsor every week, uh, yeah. and hundred percent of the ad revenue from each of those sponsors go towards a charity of the guest choosing. So this oh, week, you're before, amazing. Yeah. So what charity or cause? Do you want us to throw the money from this episode toward? You're amazing for that. Um, <laughs> hey, just tell me <laughs> yeah, how yeah, great I am. Yeah, just like... keep going, man. My ego needs more. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're terrible. That's why I'm doing you're it. That's terrible. All, this whole thing's for... an ego play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you, you know, I've been involved with this charity for, for some time, and we kind of mentioned, mentioned Elon, but uh, it, it actually came out of Tesla. It's, it's called Give Power. It's called the Give Power Foundation, and it uses Tesla technology, mo- mostly tex- Tesla and um it was mainly started by this in, in kind of a mentor of mine uh, named Hayes Barnard. Um, and he, um, it, it basically uses Tesla tech to, and, and desalination tech to, to bring fresh water to the places that need it most and solar. So it does solar for schools all around the world. It, it, um, brings fresh water and we, we've just reached 50 million liters of water per day. Wow. And so I've been involved, um, for, about four or five years now, just, just helping them, you know, raise, raise capital. And I, I truly believe in, in what they're doing. And, uh, one cool thing about it is, is my, my mentor Hayes is, has been so successful that he just pays for all the, um, kind of admin marketing and all that side. And so any donations, a hundred percent goes to That's awesome. the people. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of a uh, charity water. Yeah, um, they do totally. Some, yeah, I love yeah. those. Yeah, those charities that can do that. They, yeah. they they separate money and the giving or the fundraising part yeah. from, from the giving. And it makes you feel better about giving to them because you're like, oh, this is actually helping people. Yeah, you know, you know, I think I think that's a huge problem with some charities is they get in these inflated uh, administration costs. It's yeah. like eighty percent administration, yeah. twenty percent. Yes. Give back. Like, yeah. It's like what are we actually doing here? And yeah. maybe sometimes it's it's necessary, maybe, maybe not but we're not we don't have the ability to know. Like yeah. humans, like we're like we're just normal people. Like we can't go and dive into the financial statement of a <laughs> multi billion dollar charity. It's like I don't I don't know what this yeah. is doing. So yeah, that's super cool. I love that they do that. So let's uh let's cue the ad. <laughs> All right, so you actually, speaking of that foundation, the Give Power, didn't you go down to like South America with them? I remember seeing pictures. Yeah, yeah. Recent, recently, I went to uh, Colombia. Colombia. Yeah, and we, we went to a village there and brought electricity to, to this little coastal village and stayed. I mean, this was just the best part is, is you kind of get a host family and it's to this it's like a host mother and it's like having a mom in this village and they were so amazing and we just became like really good good friends but it's like your mom would wake you up and she's like come on yeah that's awful awesome. uh, uh, and uh they feed you and you you know you you'd um it, it was just this wonderful thing and and you know i i kind of am someone who wants to do this at least a few times a year because i think it's it, it's so rewarding and so important to kind of like do physical labor in the jungles, you know, so, yeah. somewhere if you can and, and, and try to help somebody cause it really recenters you and you're like, oh, okay, this is what life's about. It's not this kind of like, um, you know, uh, li- yeah. life that I I'm living. That's so pampered kind of yeah, thing. Right? Yeah. Cause we in America have things, you know, pretty darn easy. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. Yeah. So you also went like, to Antarctica recently. I saw that. Oh well. yeah. What was that? About? Have you, I mean, I'm guessing you haven't been. I think been, we talked. Yeah. Uh, it was incredible. Yeah. You know, it, it was, it was always on my list and I, I was never like, um, 
um, let's go to Antarctica now. Yeah. And until I got invited by this conservation group, um, walking softer, um, went out with them and holy smokes, this is, it was unbelievable. For one thing, you have to fly into like the southernmost point of Argentina and then take a boat for two days. Yeah. And you're in seas that get up to like 35 feet, 35 foot swells. And, um, you're just out at sea, like trying, like walking. So many people are sick. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm not really selling it that hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good, I'm like, man. Uh, I just like puking adventure. the whole time. Yeah. But you know, yeah, uh, <laughs> they give you kind of like anti nausea drugs, okay. but yeah, you get there and then, and then you're really in the middle of nowhere and there's just beautiful, um, I'd never imagine this, but icebergs are so beautiful that each one is a work of art. In fact, mm. I, I, somebody's probably done this, but seeing it, I was like, I wonder if it'll be a way to get like, you know, a hundred of these back and bring them to New York and have like an art show of oh, like in a cool. freezer room, frozen warehouse of icebergs. But, giant icebergs. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fascinating. Like, you know, medium sized icebergs may, or maybe one big one. But. Yeah. Then would ever total one up to like normal water or would it melt by the time we got out there? I mean, it, it would, I, I think it would probably survive a lot. I'd imagine. A long time, especially if you did it in the winter. Yeah. Let's do it. Brian. Okay. We're doing it. We're doing it. It's, <laughs> okay. the, it's the Better Life podcast. Uh, <laughs> iceberg. Yeah. Iceberg towing contest. <laughs> Whoever can bring back the largest iceberg <laughs> is going to win something really cool, like yeah. $10,000 uh, or whatever's in this box. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the box. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Do so you travel quite a bit? Where's the, where's your favorite place you've been? Oh, uh, good question. I think, um, let's see, where are some of the top places? Kenya, like going on safari mm. in Kenya. I, um, uh, I spent a new year's Eve on a, on a cliff. Uh, it was, it was a big cliff, but you know, if you're imagining it, but, um, I, I spent, we, we kind of had a fire and we, we had hiked up to this, this place and, and, you know, spent New Year's kind of night listening to lions like far away and seeing elephants down in the valley. And mm -hmm. wow, what an incredible experience. Have you done any, have I've you not, been, not yeah. been in Africa, but I was literally yesterday, I was looking up on the computer, like African safaris, like how oh, would I do this? Yeah. Uh, um, you, you know, if you ever get an opportunity to in your, in your life, I mean, it sounds like you'll definitely do it, but it, it's so. such, it, it's such a, beautiful experience so yeah that was that was one of the top and actually one of the coolest things uh uh, uh excursions i've done is off of maui um i went and scuba dived cathedrals mm. which is is closer to lanai but, yeah but um it's so beautiful um i, I love scuba diving and yeah that was yeah cool. not scuba dive but yeah my buddy ryan goes out to cathedrals i know oh yeah, yeah. oh cool yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if you can imagine it, it's this, this lava rock that's, that's made into, and the light shines through in such a way that it, inside it looks like a th cathedral. You can Google it, but that's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Top it, 10. Man. Where's the coolest place you've been? Oh, good question. Uh, I'm going to go with the Glencoe Valley. Uh, I think it's called the Valley up in Scotland in the Highlands. Oh. It's where like they filmed part of like Braveheart at and some other, like it's, it was the most epic, epic spot I've ever been. Wow. Have, you ever heard of a Bothy? No. So Bothy is these like tiny, like usually small uh, huts, like a cement hut. And basically they're, they're old buildings of some kind. Like some are old school buildings, some are houses, some are barns, uh, generally made out of concrete or, you know, stone, uh, very old that have like fallen into disrepair. And then this group in Scotland called the, uh, the Highland, I think it's called the Highland or Scotland Bothy Association. They go and they're just all volunteers, all volunteers and donations. They fix them up. And then they wow. keep them for hikers, so they can go. You can spend the night in these bothies. No electricity, no running water, no plumbing, no nothing wow. like that. Yeah, and they're all there's like over a hundred of them all over Scotland. So oh, yeah. that's so cool. It, it, yeah, there's a you know the app Calm. Yes. C -A -M. So there's these sleep stories. I do one every single night when I fall asleep. Just about. Oh wow. That changed my life. On if you want to know, like a tactical tip that changed my <laughs> life, like I would literally spend an hour to two hours every night trying to fall asleep. And then I discovered these sleep stories and now I'm out in five minutes every night, like literally changed my life because I get an hour or two of more sleep every night. That's amazing. Yeah, I couldn't turn my brain off. But one of those I had heard years ago before I'd ever been to Scotland, I gotta turn off the, well, whatever. It was on this app called Scotland's Hidden Hideaways. It's For like tonight's this. sleep story, we journey to the lush valleys and craggy mountains of the Scottish Highlands. Oh, Brandon's asleep oh, right now. Oh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a 25-30 it's a minute uh, 
talked just like in that, in that uh. tone, talking about these bodies. And so I discovered this like uh, yeah, two or three years ago. And uh, I was so like in love with that sleep story. In fact, I listened to that one 99% of the time. Of the same story, I listened to it 100, wow. 200, 300 times now. Uh, and I love it every time. And I'm just so intrigued by this idea of a bothy. And so... Uh, when we went to Scotland, which I probably wouldn't have even gone to Scotland if it weren't for that sleep story. Wow. Uh, so we went to Scotland and I'm at this spot in this Glencoe Valley and there's this, like, basically this bothy right next to me. And it was the only one I saw on the whole trip. I'm standing there and a giant mountain up there. And I mean, everything was just the most beautiful place I've ever seen. And all of a sudden I realized, I took a picture of it. And then I came back to my hotel that night and I looked at my phone at the picture. And then I looked at the background of no. the thing. And that's Way. where I was standing. Like the little pictures were almost identical. The background of the calm sleep story. Uh, and where oh, I was. That's I took, so cool. Isn't that cool? It was like. I, I'm, I don't know if I manifested it essentially. I mean, yeah. like it was like, I wanted it so bad in the back of my head was this be so cool. And I didn't sleep in it, but you know, I'll do that next trip maybe. But, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I mean, I, you, I heard that for like two seconds. I was like, I'm kind of sleepy now. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I highly recommend yeah. checking out the calm sleep stories. Yeah. There's other apps. This episode too, is yeah. brought to you. <laughs> and we're out. All right. I want to go back to poetry for a minute. Uh, I know we're jumping all over the place today, but yeah. those are my favorite types of episodes. Uh, how do you write? Like, what is your style? Can 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 I write a poem right now? I'm, <laughs> no, but how how would you do if you're like sitting down, blank piece of paper, uh, for what you're willing to reveal? How do yeah. you do it? You know, I, I love I love talking about because it it's kind of the first question I get on on DMs and things. It's like, how do you beat writer's block, or how do you? Yeah. How, what's your kind of writing process? And um, uh, you know, it it's um it, it's different. For one thing, you know. I think people love the idea of me writing on a notebook or, or a typewriter and I've definitely done that, but I find that my phone and my notes is, is kind of the most efficient way for me to do it. And, and so like an idea or like some, somebody will say something that I think is beautiful in like a beautiful way, you know, and it's just got, kind of gives you a seed of an idea and then I'll write that in my phone usually. Um, and, um, and then, you know, kind of late later and, and I used to do it late at night, but now I, I do it in the morning after a cup of coffee, I'll just, you know, sit down and write and I'll go through all those kind of sparks of ideas and, um, I'll, I'll just see if it turns into a poem and, um, you know, if, if one's not working, I'll go to the next one and the next one and I'll come back to them. And so I do jump around a lot. Um, but you know, that's how I kind of, c- kind of come up with it. And then, you know, once, once I'm re- you know, once I'm at a, a certain point, you know, this, this is like how I, how I write a book. Um, but you know, I'll post those and whatnot, but like once I've signed on to do a book, I'll, I'll just like write 200, kind of narrow it down to 200 and then I'll send it to it. Um, my group of, um, of, of people that work for me and just get them to weigh in just like, Hey, do you like this one? Would you change anything? Like, would you swap out words? Like, and I'll just get them on a shared Google doc to just weigh in. Um, and that includes my publisher, my agent, and there's probably six of us who kind of go through it. And sometimes I'm like, yes, I agree with this. Or they're like, sometimes I'm like, they're all like, take this poem out. And I'm like, nah, nope, I just, I'm trying to say something here yeah. and it, you know, I'll just keep it in. So, you know, director's cut. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's kind of, that's kind of how I, I do it. I think the, the, the way I used to write was, was a bit more romantic. I, I had a, I lived in Venice beach and had this kind of writer shack outside the back and it was, it was tiny, like no, it had electricity, but that, that was it. Um, and I, I just fill it through full of everything that inspired me. All the, like my favorite Hemingway books, Winston Churchill stuff, typewriters, um, candles, whiskey, coffee. Um, and I, I would just go in there and, and sometimes I'd write and sometimes I'd just read, but I, I think I, I kind of miss that because it was very pure and you're kind of like, sure. you just get so in, you get, get so in the flow. What does your yeah. routine look like? Are you a write every day kind of guy, like show up at nine o'clock and write? Or is it just when something strikes you? I, I should I should be. You know, I think like every writer, I'm like, I should should write more. But it's usually like when I sign on to do a book, I'll, I'll really get more serious about it um, and just have intermittent writing. I should write more than I do. <laughs> mm. Do you ever plan to expand to writing into, you know, fiction, nonfiction, like books? Actually, like- yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm halfway through a novel right oh, now. Oh, no way. Yeah which I'm very excited about. And then I'm, I'm also working on a, on a kid's book, which I'm the most excited about. That's cool. And do you have kids that you don't have kids yet? No, I don't have kids. Uh, but I'm, I'm an uncle and, um, 
you know, I just feel like I, when I, whenever I like hang out with kids, I feel like I can get into their head Mm -hmm. heads and maybe it's just how childish and immature I am. Probably (laughs) that. Um, but I feel like I can get into their heads and, and I would know, and I know what they'd want to like read about it. And it's going to be totally silly, but, um, I think they'll enjoy it. That's very cool. Yeah. I I started writing a kid's book a few years ago. Oh, cool. um, And, uh, have kind of put on the shelf for now, even though it's like, feels like it should be super easy. Yeah. But what's that great quote? Like what's easy to do is easy not to do. Right. Uh, so what, what it's, it's like really easy to write, you know, 500 words for a little kid's book. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I could do that, but I can also not do that. <laughs> and so like, so I just didn't do it for a long time. And I just, I literally just need to sit down and finish it. And it I know shouldn't be that hard. Mean. By the way, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what's easy to do is easy not to do. Yeah. And so I, I try to, when I'm actually yeah working on a book, that's when I sit down every day yeah, hundred days straight, and I'll just like knock out a thousand words a day, or whatever the thing is, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, and and having that ritual, like the like you said, the writer's cabin or whatever you want, like that kind of thing, that vibe. Like I'm gonna go somewhere where every time I go here, I'm in the in the spot. But I also keep track, just like you do, on the notes on my phone. I use Evernote, and every time I just have it. I hear a funny story or a interesting idea or I'm like literally getting like a massage and all yeah. of a sudden this thought comes to me. I yeah. grab my phone. I'm like, I have to write it down. Yeah. Uh, which I hear is how Taylor Swift writes her songs too. She once, oh, really? She once had a, a podcast or something she did talking about that. Oh, cool. It's like everyone just knows if she's like, give me my phone. Like everyone like rushes to get her, her the phone <laughs> so she doesn't forget the idea. And it might just be what makes her so good at writing. I mean, she is very impressive. Yeah. Uh, I have to say, I don't think I've ever... I mean, has there yeah. been someone in history that can just kind of control the charts? Yeah, I don't know. Charts, like, I would say the can. only one close right now is like that Morgan Wallen guy, like the oh, country yeah. singer. Oh, yeah. Like he has out of the 50 songs on Apple right now, he's got 36 of the top 50 songs. What? Like is that one right? guy. Crazy. It's just because, I mean, and his album has 36 songs on it. So it's his whole album. And I remember Taylor Swift did that maybe a year ago. Her album came out and just every song ends up being one of the top songs in the world. <laughs> this is the way it works. Yeah, there's like a, you know, Alex and I were just talking about this yesterday about, I think with you and mine was, uh, yeah, but the, yeah, the, um, you know, just like business are like, you know, there, there were once 50,000 different mobile home park owners and today there's only like maybe a few thousand yeah. and then 10 years from now, there'll be like 12, yeah. you know, like they, they roll up, uh, <laughs> yeah. in every industry it's happening, but it's happening as well in, uh, this, I, in music is like a few people like the, the rich are getting richer uh, yeah. and, and not necessarily in wealth, but also in wealth. It, it is true. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of happening with billionaires as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everything just rolls up to the big ones. But, you know, I went on a date with Taylor Swift. Um, no, did, did you really? Years ago. Yeah. You went on a date with Taylor Swift? <laughs> I mean, kind, I told you he's of. the most connected guy I've ever known. This is, it's, I mean, it just kind of, you know, we, we just like, <laughs> um, yeah, we just went. That's nuts. Yeah. It didn't funny. work out though, clearly. Well, it was like, uh, it was like a hang more than a date. But okay, like, yeah. she, she's like, She's like very down to earth and she's a wonderful person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, you ended up with a better one anyway. So yeah, <laughs> uh, you're, yeah, you've met my wife. I have. Yeah. 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 You guys are, you guys are awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about business yeah. a little bit. Cause we've talked about poetry and all that. Let's talk about the business. One example I got actually on the table here for those watching on YouTube is, uh, or is poet, uh, by Atticus coffee premium cafe coffee. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Where yeah. the heck did you come up with? I'm going to, I'm a poet. Now I'm selling coffee. You know, you know what it was, I mean, I think, you know, about the, like I launched a wine a few years ago. And so I launched a coffee, like, um, I think it was, we've been working on it for like a year and a half, but, um, launched it two months ago. Um, I basically just like do what I love. Like Mm -hmm. I love red wine and rosé and, um, and I was like, what else do I love? I was like, I love coffee, you know? And I have, um, you know, I, 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 I largely sometimes, um, for my second book, I went, I moved to Paris and I stayed in this tiny little attic cause I wanted to really have like the poet's life. And, um, I, every day I would get up and go down to this same cafe, same cafe and, and have a coffee. And it just helped me write so much, you know, the right cup of coffee yeah. is incredible. And the wrong cup of coffee, I feel like just makes me more tired. And I, what I noticed was that a lot of the coffees that I was having in in, in Paris and throughout Europe were just superior in whatever way. I didn't like, I couldn't like figure it out. And when I'd come back, I'd go to a coffee shop in, in, um, uh, America. And I was like, you know, it's just not hitting the same. I don't have the same amount of creativity yet. And I was like, I want to create like the creator's cup of coffee so that I, one, I have coffee that I can drink, um, when I want to write. 
and two that other people can drink when they when they want to be creative and they don't get that kind of like brain fog or you know like more tired feeling it's like what's going on which i've you know later found out is is like mold and and really low quality coffee so i um teamed up with this with this group to make like what i think is the best cup of coffee um it, it it was the ex roaster from blue bottle, which is like, oh, a, yeah, it's yeah. A legit good coffee. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and like all, all kind of respect to them. They're, they're just connoisseurs. They're like master sommeliers of coffee. Yeah. And you know, we we're, we're, we're some of the first in the world to go full electric. So there's no gases or whatever. Um, it's all women known farms, you know, really, really, um, really, really high quality. And like, what, what, you know, we were talking about before the, sh- before the show started, it's small batch, high iteration, you know, so we're like almost machine learning. What's the best cup of coffee? Always getting better, always getting better. And so yeah. we're always just improving. And so again, it's kind of like, uh, the poetry. I never expected someone to show people to show up, but people are loving the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it goes to, we talked about fame earlier. There's the good sides and the bad sides. One of the good parts of having an audience of having an Instagram following yeah. or whatever is your ability to then when you love something like your coffee, yeah. you can be like, Hey, now I can sell my coffee to people and they buy it. Yeah, I think, yeah. Thank And, and thank, thank you. And I, I would say that one of the best things I've, I, I've noticed about you is you're, you're just like always providing true value and you're like your transparency of like, Hey guys, I learned something, a hack, which I think will help you. Like whether it's real estate or whatever, it's just like, this made, made my life better, you know? Yeah. Thanks man. Um, yeah. You're, you're very, very, very good at that. And, and I think that's, you know, why, well, certainly why you've been successful, but I think it really leads to success. It's like, as they say, like when you reach the top of the mountain, let down the rope, you mm. know? And I think you've done a really, yeah, incredible job of that. Keep um, going, man. I'm loving this. Yeah. This okay. Great. God. This is, <laughs> no, I know this is the problem with being famous. There you, you go. Know? So how, how do you, how do you view business right now? I mean, like what, what do you, what are you trying to do? I mean, do you have like a monetary goal? Like, Hey, I just want to make X millions of dollars or have this net worth. Um, yeah. Where, where do you view that? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 th- I think certainly, you know, I, th- I think, um, you gotta be really, really careful with that, with like moving the goalposts. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it with, with close friends of being like, I just need a hundred thousand dollars. I just need a million. Yeah. I just need $1 billion yeah. Yeah, and then I'll be happy for sure. Yeah, a, a trillion dollars would be <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Exactly. Um, and I think you gotta be really, really, you gotta check yourself, but there, there is like uh, a quality of life. And I think, you know, one thing that uh, a certain level of wealth does create is is like you know it it allows you the freedom to to kind of control a lot in your life and and optimize for happiness mm-hmm. and um you know i think there's no see like you can go to chat gpt and and ask them what are the kind of secrets to happiness and they don't that what comes out i did it the other day and it's like it's like it's all kind of obvious you know and so if you can use money to, to forward, you know, move towards those things, I really think you'll, you'll reach a lot, like, uh, it'll help you towards happiness. And, you know, a big piece of that is like health, you know, helping other people, mm. um, um, pursuing what you're really passionate and interested in rather than things you think you have to do. And, um, and like creating sense of community. Um, and so, you know, I, I think from, from my business f- perspective, I, I certainly have kind of like, a range of like passive versus active, but you know, I, I've been, um, w- one thing I've been doing uh, a lot is just like, um, hiring and, and passing off things that I'm not very good at and things that I really don't enjoy. Um, and uh, I think you've, you've maybe mentioned it before, but like the executive assistant thing mm, yeah. is so helpful, um, for me. Um, and I've, I've used two, one is squared away which has been, been amazing. And they kind of an app squared away. It's like a, it's a website, but it basically, it employs like, um, the, the, the spouses of, of army vets. Oh, that's yeah. Armed forces. Um, and then I use Athena as well, which is like Athena, uh, virtual assistant. Um, and that one's kind of an, an overseas thing. Um, but you know, the, the quality of work you get for these, um, has been an, been amazing actually if you if you mention this is not a plug but if yeah. you mention atticus i think they'll give you they'll, you'll skip the line or get a discount or something there you go. yeah i like it um 
Um, yeah. So yeah, you know, that kind of thing has helped out and just like a, the bookkeeper has helped out so much the head of operations, you know, kind of like general manager of all the pieces helped out so much. And, um, basically all the pieces that I'm not very good at. So it, it allows me to concentrate on, you know, one creative, like writing, um, poetry and, and just like, you know, you, you've heard like staying in your zone of z- zone of yeah. genius. Right. And a lot of us can do things, but it takes us like two X the amount of time, three X the amount of time. You know, for me, it's like technical stuff yeah. I'm terrible at and accounting terrible at, but, um, business development, like meeting people I'm, I'm like way better at. Yeah. There's a great story. Uh, I, I tell it all the time, but it's one of my favorite stories is that Dr. Oz, when he was at like the height of his career, you know, the guy just ran for you know Congress or whatever, but Dr. Oz had a couple of TV shows, magazines. He was on Oprah all the time. He was writing like a bunch of articles and a bunch of other magazines. Like he was, he was so busy and at the height of his career, he was still doing 300 open heart surgeries every year. What? And yeah, it's mind blowing. How could he do that? And it's because he wasn't cutting people open. He wasn't walking yeah. them up from the, the, he wasn't parking their car for them. He wasn't, you yeah. know, <laughs> talking to them in the waiting room. He wasn't doing any of that. All yeah. he would do is walk in the room, do his cut yeah. and then walk out of the room. Yeah. It's Cause that's the thing that he was trained and was the best in the world at that thing. And totally. if we can start recognizing like, what is my Dr. Oz cut? Yeah. What is the thing that I can do? That it's, somebody else can do their Dr. Oz cut. Yeah. It's, it's, it makes all the difference in the world. It's, it's so, so true. And, and it's also like, what are the things that give you energy rather than take energy yes. uh-huh. is like honing in on that. And, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's hard when you first start out um, and you're making your first like yeah. anything because you have to do a lot of that stuff yourself and you just kind of got to grind through it. Yep. And like, but as soon as you're able to, to just kind of outsource the, the bottom 10% and then the bottom 20% until you're like completely in your zone of genius or excellence. Yeah. That's yeah. real magic. I think happens. Yeah. Real. And you're providing then for, I mean, all the people you're employing, whether it's overseas or on in America, yeah, helping them pay their bills. Yeah, uh, totally. You're, you're helping them solve and, their problems. And, and by the way, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll like plug my executive assistant. She's just like, she loves to do it and she's so good at it. Yeah. Like she can, book a flight in uh, a quarter of the time and it take me. I'm just like, I'm so bad at it. Yeah. Logistics. And terrible. The, God. Yep. I, I found, yeah, if there's one, uh, if I had to boil down all like success that I've had with like, for example, open door capital, right? The yeah. real estate it that I just got really good people to do the thing that they were really good at doing mm-hmm. and that they get a lot of energy from doing. I just put each of them in their place. And it took time. We had to move people around and we brought some people in and took some people out. But over time, we built this engine that just like this part moves this part, this one moves that one. And everybody loves their, their part of the engine. Yeah. So nobody's like, oh, I hate my job because I, I only got people to do the job that they were like put yeah. on this earth to do. I always give the example of Mike Williams, who's my investor relations guy. I think I'm sure you've talked to Mike. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mike is like the kindest, greatest guy in the world to talk with. He loves talking. He's so genuine. Nice. Right? So <laughs> nice. I love the guy. Like he lo- his favorite thing in the world is like get on a phone call with someone. And yeah. I'm like that sounds like the worst day of my life to get on a phone call, but he loves it. Yeah. Uh, and so like when he, at the end of a long day of phone calls, he's like, what a good day at work. Yeah. And yeah. like, yeah. Then I got Jay who will sit on a spreadsheet for six or eight hours <laughs> or talk to brokers. And then I've got, you know, Walker who will be in meetings all day with each of the team members. Each of them are doing the thing that they love to do. Yeah. So when you can align a Very mission yeah, yeah. and you get everyone lined up with the right thing that they're put on this earth to do, everyone just, it's just, it's a rocket ship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's so, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I feel like there's, that's this, that's the big secret. It really is. It's, and it's, it's so simple, um, that people just don't do it. What's easy to do is easy not to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a, the same thing we keep coming back to. So where do you, I mean, you've invested now, you know, obviously with me and yeah, I, I actually lot. invested uh-huh. with you. Yeah. You've yeah. been a huge supporter. Uh-huh. Where do you make your money from and where's your wealth come from? <laughs> it's or, a good, uh, it's a good question. Um, I feel like I should know this, but I don't. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you it, got wine you know, and I, coffee and all. I the think things. it's like I think it's a variety of things. You know, it I, it it is, and it's probably like a a business professor would probably sit down and be like, "You're doing way too much, <laughs> and not well enough." You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I I I created five television shows when mm. I was um, uh, a different person. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I 
created Atticus and put out, you know, I put out a book a year and, and the books, um, do really well. I think I'll continue doing those, those books. I have like a merchandise that we sell, you know, Atticus merch on online. Uh, we have the wine company, we have the coffee company. We do a lot of like, a lot of our business is licensing. So like a collaborations with other cool companies. It's oh, like, geez. you know, we're, we're working on one with spiritual gangster and, you know, it can be anybody from, you know, absolute vodka. We've done maroon five and, you know, Kygo, just like kind of whatever we think fits the brand and is fun, you know, um, and makes sense. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I've, um, um, been in, invested in, in cool companies like S- SpaceX, yeah. or, you know, or earlier on and really believe in, in making humans interplanetary. Um, yeah. And then a lot of real estate as well. You know, I, I started out buying, buying houses in, in Canada and have a kind of an investment group there and, and invest a ton. And then, you know, doing, doing things like open door capital as well has been, has been great. Yeah. Yeah. What's your kind of investment thesis? Like how, how do you decide what to invest in? So whether it's a piece of real estate or a syndication like mine or a company, um, how do you decide? Yeah, I, I work with, now I have a, a kind of a family office that, that, um, um, we, we kind of are, are, you know, as, as you know, like there's a different strategy to like make a certain amount of wealth versus like keep, keep yeah. wealth. And so, you know, I, I've been work been working really hard on diversification and, and just like, you know, if this industry goes down, this industry will go up and, and, um, I have a lot of private investments, um, angel investments, you know, so just like balancing that with all the other things. And, um, right, right now it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm plan you know, it, it, I go for like return. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's got to meet that kind of diversification. Uh, I'm pretty concentrated in real estate. Um, Why is that? I, I just I've always believed in it. You know, yeah. it's like uh, I'm probably like you. It's 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 nice to be able to go down and see an asset that you you own. I think some of these venture things, um, you kind of just have more options as you go. And I, I kind of just believe in American real estate long term in America. Uh, um, and, and Canada for, for, to, to a similar degree. Um, but you know, some of this venture stuff you invest and you don't, you're like, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> What's it worth? It's like, I haven't heard from them in seven years. Yeah. You just get a K one every once in a while. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, um, more risk adverse in that, in that sense. And, um, I, I, I'm, I'm basically like spreading my, you know, I have the exciting stuff. SpaceX and, and things all in that realm. And then I have the boring stuff, which is real estate. Yeah. Uh, yeah that makes not that real estate's boring, but like it's pretty the, boring. <laughs> the, the real estate that I like to invest in is the boring stuff. And that, yeah. that's why I love your mobile home parks and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. We've done a few, you know, I've done a few venture stuff, you know, and uh, yeah, it, it's exactly what you said. It's, it might go to like a hundred X. Maybe I'll make a lot of money someday. Yeah. There's a good chance I'll make nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some of my money back. You just don't really know, but you, that's what it, it's silent forever. Yeah. You just don't really hear anything. And so it's, it's super weird. I, I still like, it's fun to do that. I'd be like, Oh, I'm an investor in SpaceX. Like yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, I really like real estate. Like I just, yeah, I love just buying a piece of real estate and be like, that's mine. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, me and I own that. a hundred yeah. other people, but we're like, we own that and it's not going to zero. Yeah. And I can see the tenants that are there and yeah, I mean, makes sense. Yeah, we've all heard the quote, like, well, I think it's Warren Buffett. He said, uh, no one wants to get rich slow, right? Um, but I, I think there's something to that. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I like incremental, um, uh, you know, growth. Yeah. I, and it really does that up over time. Yeah, yeah, right? And I think there's something to that. And I think I think it's almost a hack to happiness in the sense of you always feel like you're you're progressing up and to the right a bit. Mm. I talked to, to Kimball Musk about this, Elon's brother, and he he says this. He, he's like, you know, I, as I get older, I'm like more less into venture and more into predictability because, um, you know, my, my net worth has gone like to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> literally. And then like you know, down again and it's, it's stressful and you kind of, you never know where you are and you're like wealthy on paper, but you're not in, you know, sometimes not in real life. And, and he, he's the first one that said to me, he's like, he's like up and to the right, up and to the right is, is what I think 
um, makes you feel better because you feel like you're getting better every day. You feel like you're growing and, and instead of having these massive windfalls and then being like, okay, what's the next one? You're kind of just growing. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, cool, man. All right. Well, I'm going to start moving to the next segment of the show. Uh, There's this segment that we like to do. It's called, I don't really have a name for it. We're calling it the three better life questions. So it starts (laughs) this way. Uh, What are three things that you've done over the past year, like fit, like tangible things that you've changed or maybe a new belief you adopted or a a thing you bought or a, a, you know, whatever person you met three things that have given you a better life over the past year. Oh, that's a great question. Um, one is uh, breath work. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm someone who's always struggled with uh, meditation. Mm-hmm. And I find that if I do just like, I do Wim Hof. There's like one on YouTube and it's, and it's very easy to find. And I do a 10 minute uh, Wim Hof breathe. It's so easy to do. And then that can kind of lead is if I'm feeling it into a meditation really easily. What, what, what do you like about the breath work? I've done a little bit. I've done that. I've done that one, the, probably the same 10 minute one, yeah. off one. And I've done another like hour or two hour one. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's a few things. One, it's guided and it's like, you know, I'll just do this 10 minutes and I'm done. And I'm, there's, I'm not bored throughout the whole thing. And, and I, I find, um, just that act of breathing gives me a ton of energy, mm-hmm. right? Um, it also calms me down. Um, and so I find it's, it's like if I get tired and, you know, halfway through the day or, you know, before, you know, a po- interview or podcast or just to like reset, it's really, really nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's one of those things that's on my list of like, I need to do more breath work. Like yeah. the one time I did it, I mean, like, it was the long, I think it had to be an hour, hour and a half. I don't know. It was a while. Um, we did it for, and I, I got my, you know, fingers were all tingly, yeah. like legs were tingly, I got really cold. Yeah. I started... Like I thought I fell asleep. It might have just been hallucinating because they say it's almost like when you do it for a long time, it's almost like you're on yeah. you know, shrooms or psychedelics or something. Yeah, of some totally. kind. Yeah. Uh, obviously not as severe, but it was it was a weird thing. Probably because you're just like hyper oxygen in your blood or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, and I walked away from it. Everyone, I mean, there were people in the room that were like crying. There yeah. were people that were just like, my life has changed. I haven't <laughs> breathed like this. For, uh, and it was, I was like, my fingers felt tingly, you know, like I was like, I didn't really have like a, a deep, like, You're like is something wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, am I supposed to feel more emotional? So I don't, again, I don't know if that's uh now, you know, maybe, I mean, maybe that's because I'm just a, uh, the last guest that we interviewed, uh, Brooke, we, she did like assessment on me. Um, and said I was straight down the middle with, when it comes to, uh, regulation, like being like not too wound up and stressed and oh, not cool. too relaxed. Like, maybe it's cause I'm pretty mellow most of the time. I don't know, but yeah, I just didn't feel it, but I, I, I believe like there's so much science around breath work. Yeah. So it must, it must improve it. And maybe what you said there is it like calms you down, but it also gives you energy, which is yeah. a really interesting. I know it is interesting. Thing. I mean, yeah, you, you hear about the Navy SEALs that they, they do a lot of stuff with breath to yeah. calm them themselves down. But you know, I think, I think the Wim Hof one's good because it just, it does both. You kind of hold, you, you, you hyper, you know, you breathe a lot, which oxygenate like puts a lot of oxygen in your blood and then you also like hold your breath and which gives you that kind of more like relaxation. You know, I think it's different strokes for different people. This is just something that I've found that works for me. And like, I've tried so many different things and it's hard to stick to it Mm -hmm. and it's hard to keep doing it. Um, but yeah, that's like definitely, one thing and like you know by the way i love the tingly feeling it's yeah, like, yeah i feel like it's working you know yeah 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 um, it's a actually yeah. that reminds me so i heard the story years ago um and i've been i categorized it on my evernote and i've been using it for a place to bring it out and i'm bringing it out now yeah <laughs> okay so when they made toothpaste originally uh toothpaste didn't have that tingly feeling it was just like a paste that you brush oh, your teeth wow. with and nobody would brush their teeth they could not get for years they couldn't get Americans to brush their teeth or anybody to brush their teeth. It was like, no, this is really good for you. You should do it. Nobody would do it. So somebody had the idea, let's add in this, whatever, whatever chemical or whatever thing that makes it wow. that tingly feeling. And all of a sudden that made people brush their teeth because they felt they could feel it working. The tingliness with the mint toothpaste has nothing to do with the cleaning. And so to today, it has nothing to do with the cleaning power of your teeth, but it makes you feel like you're, it you're, sure does. You're, yeah. Just like the tingling maybe with the uh, breath work. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I swear it's like that. I, yeah. But totally that's okay. Good. Right. Because if, if, like if it's okay to, to even, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's more legit than that, but like, it's okay that the tingly toothpaste makes me brush my teeth because yeah. it's making me brush my teeth. Yeah. I don't care if I'm being tricky, if I'm tricking myself into something, if it's, 
you know, it may be, it's whatever works, whatever know? works. Yeah. yeah. And, and I wonder, you said something really profound. It was really a simple statement you said, but you said, I don't get bored doing it. Yeah. And I wonder, maybe that's why breath work, maybe it's the, I'm, I'm totally guessing here. Maybe we need to ask Andrew Huberman this, but like if, uh, <laughs> if maybe meditation and breath work is like the exact same thing in your brain, but we, you and I just get bored doing meditation. Yeah. Breath work keeps you act movie doing something yeah to to get you that same spot meditation gets you to i think so i mean i i think and, and you're like kind of changing you know so quickly yeah. <laughs> you know maybe we're just adhd yeah, maybe yeah right? it's uh, like but <laughs> do something different yeah. now breathe yeah, now hold your yeah, breath. yeah, yeah breathe. breathe breathe yeah okay i can do that i can follow rules. i think that's exactly what it is it's yeah. people who need that like that <laughs> yeah i would love to ask that uh brooke weinstein about that because she would have i'm sure some great thought on that but <laughs> sure it is oh i love it all right so number one thing you've done is breath work what else you yeah got two more uh second would would be what what i said before is kind of outsourcing and getting the the one is executive assistants mm, yeah. um and and kind of more and more outsourcing the things that i'm not good at is is like really changed my life um and as it re- kind of relates to that is the third was a business coach mm. Um, it's made my life, um, so much better. Uh, and you got, it, it's kind of hard to find the right one, but, um, just someone to hold you to things, challenge you. Um, and, and the right one should really like for me personally has like introduced me to, to people has like brought in so much value that it's, you can really see how much you're paying them and, and it comes back to pay, to pay dividends. Um, how'd you find yours? Um, I honestly put it on my Instagram. Does anybody know, uh, 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 a business coach and I, I met with five and found one that I liked the most. And that's the one I've been using for the last, for last year, but that that's, that's helped a ton. Um, that's awesome. And my fourth one, even though it's three better life was getting a poppy popcorn. Her name is popcorn. Yeah. What kind? It's a golden retriever. Um, yeah. And you know, it's just been, it's been the best. I know I I grew up with, um, my grandparent had a golden and so I'd always wanted one and it's just been nice to, nice to get one. That's awesome, (laughs) man. Yeah. I am a, I have one little dog, but I, this is going to sound really morbid. I, I can't wait until she passes away because I want to get a real dog. (laughs) Like I I want a real dog right now. I have a rat um, and she's very cute. I love her, uh, but I don't want two dogs. So I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to the day that, you know, it's gonna be a sad day, but I'm looking forward to that day. My wife right now is listening to this probably and just like, I can't believe you said that on the podcast. Yeah. How dare you? Uh, Kids will never listen to this episode. That's a saint. Uh, (laughs) All right. So bring back the business coach thing. You know, what's funny is how there is a, I don't want to call it correlation, but the people who most you would not think they need coaches are the ones that always have coaches. The best, mm. the best golfer in the world, like Tiger Woods, let's say, yeah. has multiple coaches. The best basketball players have coaches on each of their like yeah. aspects of their life. Isn't that funny? Yet people are like, "Oh, I don't need a coach." Yeah. Like, well, are you uh, like you don't like? Okay, Tiger needs one because he's so crappy yeah. at golf. He needs a coach, but you don't because you're sitting on a couch every day watching, you know, Seinfeld reruns. Like, <laughs> like it's just funny. Like, yeah, having a business coach has yeah changed my life as well. Yeah, has it? Yeah. yeah. Um, we might even implement. You know, we have the Better Life Tribe that we have right now, and we've got these accountability pods where you meet with like three to seven other people and they hold each other accountable. But amazing. I think, yeah. And I love it. It's amazing to have that group, but I'm also, I might add another layer, another tier at some point where it's like, if you want a one-on-one, cause there's a, even more value in like for those who can afford it to have somebody like one-on-one, like you said you were going to do this. Yeah. Like, and then the introduction, let me introduce you to my other client or like this person over here. So there's, yeah. there's definitely a, you know, you can write down your goals and be successful. You can write down your goals and have some accountability, be more successful, or you can have a, like pay the big bucks and get a, a coach to like, push yeah. You. And it's a, it's a game changer. Uh, have you read the, I think I, you gave me one of the, I think you gave me compound effect book. Yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. Book, yeah. So I read that and I, and I love that. It was, yeah. it was, um, I, I got a ton from that. And then, uh, another book I got from my business coach just on that note is, was the one thing. Oh yeah. J. Papazan. Yeah, yeah. I love that book. Yeah. You know, it, it's really helped me kind of refocus and like even look back and be like, Oh wow. Like, you know, if I, I could have done just this one thing yeah. and probably made more money than, or, you know, and been more successful than if I did yeah. these like thousand other things. And so I'm, I'm really trying to like 
refocus my energy this year on like, what's the one thing I could do in my relationship yeah. uh, this year that would trump everything else? One thing I could do in my business, one thing I could do in my spirituality, um, and just like, and honing those things on in because I think, you know, I, I'm someone who just like loves to write a new year's resolutions of about a thousand yeah, things yeah. and I wouldn't do all this, you know? And, and, uh, you know, I think you could have less pressure and stress on yourself if you, if you hone that focus in. When I read the one thing, the book, the one thing, you know, Jay Pappas and Gary Keller, I immediately, I got to the last page. The only time I've ever done this, I got to the end, last page and I just turned it back over. I started page one. I read it all again. Yes. And then over that year, I think I read it 20 or 30 times. Wow. I, in my head, I said, I'm normally like a 50 to 100 book a year person. I read yeah. a lot of books. And I was like, well, what if instead of reading 50 books one time, oh, what if I read so... one book 50 times? Because <laughs> uh, I took that that's idea. So one thing. It's yeah. so Yeah, <laughs> it's so meta. So I didn't get 50, but I definitely read it you know, at least 20 times. Wow. Um, I just I would listen to it on Audible over and over. And I was like, if I can just nail this... This book, if I can nail just this concept in this book, yeah, I my life will forever be changed, and yeah. I really believe it worked. I mean, that was that was before I started Open Door Capital. That was before wow. I left the podcast. That was before all this. Like my life took a dramatic shift. shift. Yeah, when I read uh, the one thing, I love that, and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, yeah. you know, read I, it again. I found those those two books to be so profound yeah. that it, you know I, I would read them. Yeah, Jay actually the, the you know the co-author of that is actually the keynote speaker at our 2023 uh, the Better Life Real Estate Summit that we're doing in Maui. Oh, incredible! Which by the time this airs, I think will already have happened. But yeah, he's our <laughs> yeah he's a friend. Do you know Jay at all? No, I don't. I'll, I'll introduce you. You guys yeah, are both yeah. in Austin. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I would love to connect. Absolutely. Yeah, he is amazing. Uh, yeah. He's one of my favorite humans. Him and Wendy are just two of my oh. favorite people in the world. So yeah. I've definitely introduced I'm, you to them. Amazing. Can I ask you when when do you read? Um, uh, nonfiction like mm. when are you listening like yeah easy when you travel on your planes and stuff but like when you can't read on planes for whatever oh, reason really i'm terrible at reading on planes sometimes uh, yeah. a little bit i get it i but, totally get it i'm yeah, like morning ooh. is when i read yeah oh you do yeah before I, you kind of answer well, emails yeah before the kids before the emails uh i get up uh usually six o'clock i go outside mm. i just like porch on my front uh my front lanai uh this little swinging chair and i sit there and then i always like Try to read a chapter of a nonfiction book uh, every morning, uh, along with a bunch of other routine stuff that I do. And uh, yeah, just like a chapter a day is like 50 books a year. It's like, crazy how fast, like when you just read wow. like a couple chapters, maybe two chapters a day is probably 50 books a year. It's that's nice. And then like that's before jumping into email and yeah. like everything. Yeah. Yeah. How about I, you? Um, well, that, that, I mean, I was looking for, for, for kind of advice because like when, when I, when I am traveling, I, it, it, um, I can do it, you know, I, I'll listen to an audiobook or like mm. have a book, but, um, sometimes when I'm in my kind of flow at home or my routine, I'm like, uh, I'll get up and I'll, you know, start answering emails and then you're yeah. toast. But, but I have like, I, I read the daily stock, you know, before I start work, which yeah. is nice and just kind of sets my intention or whatever for the day. But yeah, maybe I'll do that. Uh, try that just kind of like reading nonfiction in the, in the morning, a chapter a day. Yeah. I like yeah. that. If I can just knock off like, yeah, one chapter a day will get me through in a ridiculous number of books in a given year. Yeah. It also like allows you to apply that straight after yeah. you kind of thing. Yeah. What is your morning routine? Vaguely? Uh, yeah. I so I wake up, I, I, you know, AeroPress. Yeah. Um, totally. so actually, uh, our friend ha owns that, right? Yeah, like, totally. Uh, yeah. Andrew Wilkinson. Uh, yeah. yeah. Andrew Wilkinson owns that. Um, so I make an AeroPress coffee every morning, even though I could, I could do a machine. I have a latte maker. I could do all this stuff. I just, I like the almost meditation mm -hmm. of, of it, right? Like there's all yeah. these steps and do the AeroPress. Anyway, I grab that. I usually grab a protein bar. Not always, but usually. Yeah. And then I sit on the porch and I usually, uh, yeah, I'll usually read a chapter or so. I'm trying to, I'm trying to read the entire Bible right now in a year. I want to see if oh. I can do that. Uh, it's a lot. Good for you. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm trying. Uh, so I read that for a little bit. I read a, business book or a personal development book or whatever of some kind, um, for a little bit. Uh, and then I journal, I have like a little, like, uh, we call it the better life book. It's part of the tribe. It's, it's oh, cool. literally takes me less than, it's probably less than one minute. All I do is I just check, what did I do yesterday? I have nine things that I'm tracking, mm. uh, from the day before. So did I, uh, have dinner as a family? That's one of the things I'm tracking this quarter. Did I, um, uh, read yesterday? Uh, did I Great. get 10,000 steps? Did I go to the gym? Did I, and so I track this stuff and I just simply go check or dash. Yeah. This is probably the most impactful thing that I've done is I just check or dash and at the very bottom now, like uh, at the end of the week, I now can count up all my check marks and I have a number 
And a, and I know a perfect week would be this number. And here's my actual number. Whoa. And so then I say, hey, like, like honestly, last week I had a 52%. It was terrible. Probably one of the worst <laughs> I've ever had. But I was traveling and I had people here and it was yeah. a mess. Um, but like, yeah, as if, if long as my percentages are getting better over the course of a quarter or a year, yeah. that means my life's getting better. Because I'm doing the things that I said I was going to do that would give me a better life. That's my whole that's great routine. So that's cool. Can you buy that journal online? Maybe I'll uh, no, you have but to be part I will, of the tribe. You have to be part of the tribe. Actually, <laughs> uh, the habit tracking part is in the intention journal from Bigger Pockets. So you oh, can cool. buy the intention journal from Bigger Pockets. They have that part as well. Oh, great. Um, I just I had a hard time. The intention journal is amazing, and I wrote that. But that one requires like a, a daily, it's a 90 day journal instead of a year. And it requires daily entry of mm. all three of your goals. What's your next step? It's much more intense mm-hmm. where I'm like, I don't have that much time yeah. to write every single day. So instead the check dash system works really well. Um, that's so cool. I'm, I forgot to mention, I'm launching this journal called, Are you really? yeah, I, I, tell us um, about the journal. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's something that I've always loved doing cause it's just like on the topics of journals, yeah. but, um, I, it, it's called the spark journal. And the idea is just like your, your best memories as like one sentence. Mm, yeah. Um, just like something that'll spark a really good memory. Yep. I love um, that. Um, and I, I, I used to write it down cause I want, I used to like want to like come to it like when I was feeling kind of down or low or something and I'd read it and each one would spark like a great memory. I'm like, oh yeah, good time. You know, oh, that was it. fun. Or like, oh yeah, great adventure. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's like a, it, it's, I wanted to create that for other people. And it was, it was just this book full of sparks yeah. and that the idea is like when you're feeling down, you just go to it and start reading your sparks and yeah. it, it's so, it, it just works. You What's know? brilliant about that is our minds record everything we've ever seen and done, right? It's all up here. Yeah. And, and we know that because that, you know, you ever been like, at some random thing, you see a car drive by, you're like, oh, that reminds me of that car I had in fourth grade, you yeah. know, or whatever. Like, <laughs> it's all up there. It's just, yeah. We have to access it. But how do we access it? What's the key? It's usually some kind of trigger, some spark. Yeah. And so by doing that, yeah, you'll, it, our minds are incredible. It's just all filed away. So unless yeah. we have that card that says it's like a Dewey Decimal System or whatever, it's like, unless you have a little card, index card that says, oh, yeah, that's the memory. It's so You tr- won't remember it. That's it. It's like the index card. And I yeah, would find I would always forget them. And, yes. and my friends would tell me about a story. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, I yeah. totally forgot yep. that happened. And I'm, I'm lazy with the, with the mm-hmm. journaling. I like, I didn't want to write this like, and then we went to Africa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? but I, I would write just like new year's on, on in Kenya, like yeah. above I uh, heard lions kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I uh, love it. Just a couple of words is all, yeah, yeah, yeah. all you need. It will trigger the memory, bring you right back. Totally. Whatever triggers, whatever sparks that memory. Yeah. For sure. in, in a similar way, I once, I had a buddy, I can't remember who said it, but it was somebody on our last podcast uh, on bigger pockets that said, um, he called it the gratitude time machine. And what you would do is you'd grab your phone and I'm going to actually do it right now. And I'm going to grab my phone and I'm going to go to my photos, go to all photos. And I'm going to scroll way back. I'm going to like take it back like years. And, uh, let me, I have way too many pictures in here. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I'm going to go like years. And I just go back to some moment way, way back. Let's go this one right here. All right. So where was I? I was at, oh yeah, I was on the North shore of Oahu. It was me and Heather. Oh, amazing. Just hanging out. Shorter beard then. I had a much shorter beard then. And this was, let me look at the date on this one. This was March 29th, 2018, right? But I remember this exact moment. I remember the sunset was one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. Uh, And it was, it was unbelievable night. And so this idea, oh, and then like a picture of my daughter, Rosie. Oh, yeah. She's like, it's like, I remember that swimsuit. (laughs) So what just happened there? I, I scrolled back. And I saw this picture and it brought me back to a great memory, yeah. which made me gr- grateful in the moment. So what this guy said is every morning, the first thing you do before you get out of bed, everyone grabs their phone and starts scrolling on Instagram. Before you do anything else, first thing you do every morning, you grab your phone, scroll back, wow. find one picture and just look at it for a minute. And it puts you into a new frame because you're now a time machine. You're going back in time. You're appreciating wow. that moment and you start your day with gratitude. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I do love that. Yeah, and that's so, easy to, to, yeah. to adopt. Yeah, it's super sure. easy. It yeah. takes 30 seconds one every morning, and that's you start great. your day in a whole different frame of mind. So, I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, I don't do it very well, but I try to do it. Whenever I think about that, like whenever I'm sparked to remember that, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to start doing that again. And then I'll forget, and I'll just open up TikTok in the morning. <laughs> like, oh, no. Yeah. All right, but so yeah. we've got your four Better Life questions. Yeah. Moving on to the next question uh, series. Uh, I have something I call a pivot book, a pivot moment in your life or a pivot book is what you were going one direction mm-hmm. and then you pivoted to a new direction because of what you read. You mentioned the one thing, so I'm going to force you to pick a three other books, uh, that your life maybe took a pivot after you read. Um, I, I have a good one. It was, uh, how to win friends and influence mm. people. 
uh, Dale Carnegie, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a great one. Um, you know, I uh, my friend put me onto it, and um, you know, it's just one of those books where where it's just it, it just like reframes how people how people um, think about themselves and how, how they, you know, inter it's just like how you interact with people. And it, it's, it's like as simple as saying, like saying someone's name, there's no more beautiful sound than your own name kind of thing. Yep. And that the idea of like, most people don't want to talk about what you might want to talk about. And so it's like finding that common ground. Yeah. It's like, it's all like very like logical if you think yep. about it. But, um, that's helped me with so much in my life and just like being able to make friends and make people feel seen and, and, um, yeah, I think, you know, that, that's definitely, um, a, a pivot point because I think before that, you know, you're just, you're just like a young, I think I read it when I was like in my twenties and, and you're just, you know, young boys, they're yeah. just kind of like all about themselves and whatever. And I think that's helped me start reframing. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. How to win friends. What else? Other um, pivot books so what do you want? Life. Three books? Three books. Um, Three books that have pivoted your life. Ooh, the, I, the Daily Stoic, I uh, think, has, has done it. Um, that's crazy, Daily, how the Daily Stoic has taken off so big. Like that, that's crazy. It's like one of the best, biggest books in the world. It's like number, I don't know, yeah. two or three on Amazon's list. Years after coming out. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it makes sense to me mm -hmm. because it's like... Um, it's just bite-sized lessons yeah. and they're good lessons to, to kind of live your life by. And it's, it's saying similar things to, you know, the Bible and other books yep. it, like touch on, on similar things, but, um, it's also broken down in such a way. Like if, if you read, you know, meditations, yep. it's not always like super easy to understand or like any of the kind of Stoics, but, um, I think it's, I think it's a new, new way to access like a kind of level of spirituality for people. Yeah. Yeah, really good stuff. All right, number three. Um, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Changed the direction of it. Your... <laughs> changed everything. Wasn't that a biography about you? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> um, what is a third? The th a third book. Um, here's 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 one, and it kind of like so. I I, I read. Uh, I mean, do, you, do you know read it all? Read read it. Read yes. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah. Right. So I read a today I learned okay, yeah. and, um, and it told me about this, 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 um, ship called the HMS Sybil. And it, it was one of the most famous, um, uh, slave ships in history. It brought more slaves to the old world than anything else. And, um, um, but uh, along one of these, uh, these, these trips, um, the, the crew mutinied took over and um, took over the ship, and then re they basically had a choice. They're like, we can all, re you know, return to to where we came from, or we can become the most badass pirates in history <laughs> and stop this from happening for, to other people. And this is all a true story, by the way. And they um, <laughs> uh, they rechristened the boat the the boat the HMS Black Joke, and became one of the most famous uh, slave destroying ships in history. Uh, and I f tracked down the, the books, the, the actual logs of this book and I, I, um, turned it into a book and now we're turning it into it. Uh, we're, we're shopping the rights to it, but uh, oh, no Jim, Jamie Fox is attached and like this whole crew. Um, it, it's like the incredible produce, these incredible producers are on. Um, but yeah, we want to make a, make a show or a Netflix series about it. And, um, yeah, so we made a book. Yeah. So it's like a very, like <laughs> that's odd great, man. question, but it, it did change my trajectory. Yeah. That um, counts. That's yeah. counts. What's it called? Do you have a name? Like, uh, it, what's, what's the book, the book called? called? It's, it's called the HMS spot or okay. it's, um, uh, it's called the black joke. Okay. Yeah. I love it's it, on Amazon. <laughs> you yeah. can read the story. That's yeah. awesome. All yeah. right. Well, yeah. good answer, man. Uh, <laughs> there's actually a few of those stories that I've read on, whether it's like today I learned or whatever that are like, how is this not a movie? Like, I know. it's such a crazy story Yeah, that that should be a movie. I know. Yeah. It, today I learned is, is such good Actually's access fun, yeah. for like incredible content. Yeah. 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 I agree. I love it. You know, yeah. speaking of that, to go full circle earlier, we talked about the writing process. Like you just like jot down a note and like your notes on your phone when you have an idea yeah. and keep it later. So that's what I typically do. I have a whole note, like a giant Evernote note thing of like today I learned and other like really random stories. Like Amazing. I pulled out earlier about the, the toothpaste. Yeah. I just like collect those. Yeah. And 
similar to the spark thing because they're all there now just certain things will like trigger the spark and i remember the article at that point oh, so i'm like full yeah. of like these like random stories of like from history <laughs> but it works uh, hey, it hey, totally I, works yeah yeah uh, i'm i'm someone who's crazy about notes too yeah. like I, I'll, I'll note everything and um uh I, it sounds like we, we we do the same thing there yeah i, I actually have a fourth book though okay because it, right. as it relates to Atticus, I think um, I love, I'm just like <laughs> four for everything. But sorry, about <laughs> break this. the rules. I like it. Yeah, but uh, on the road, Jack Kerouac. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that was a huge uh, pivot for me to um, go. Like I think uh, Atticus came came somewhere from that like yeah. beatnik poet. And, yeah, yeah. On the road, that yeah. it's hard under pressure. You know, you kind of yeah, forget yeah. the <laughs> truth. I know. Oh, dude, that's so good. Have you yeah. have you heard of the book? Um, Story worthy from Matthew Dix. Yeah, I've, I've heard of this, but yeah, I why, recommend I it a lot. You might have yeah. heard me recommending it. Yeah, uh, might be. You, you'd probably like that one. But he brings up the Spark Journal you talked about. He brings up that same concept. Yeah. Uh, he basically said when you like to generate stories for your life, uh, if you're going to be on stage speaking or you're going to be writing books or whatever, just every day write down one line of oh. something that happened that day, no matter how mundane. And you'll remember it later, like, oh, I took the dog out, but then he wouldn't come back home, and I had to run down the street, and my boxer is waiting for it. So you just like, don't dog boxers <laughs> locked out of my house. And he's like, those are usually the best stories. Oh and my god! So, yeah, I try to, I try to kind of, I do a little. I'm not good at it, so maybe I need the spark journal that you're coming out yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you one when it when it's here. Actually, that's a great idea, you know, yeah. because. Whether you're like giving a toast or you're like at a at a, a dinner party or yeah. something, it's like it's great to have like yeah. go to your stories and like okay, I got one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why Story Worthy was so good because the guy who wrote it, Matthew Dix, was actually we should get him on the podcast. I'll see if I can track him yeah. down. Yeah, he's he's like the whatever thirty something time winner of the Moth like Story Slam champ, which is like competitive Whoa. storytelling. That's like a thing. Yeah, and they go and compete and they tell stories. I've heard this. And, yeah. yeah, and so he's like the best of all time kind of guy. So he wrote this book on how to tell stories that he. One, he has these incredible stories from his own life, but he also just explains how to tell stories that are even more mundane, like even just a boring, like what you did today, how to tell that in a story. Like I, I, I've, I read that. I loved it. And I've recommended it probably, you know, everybody I, I've recommended that book to, and wow. everybody loves it. Everyone like, and nobody's a competitive storyteller, but everyone gets value <laughs> out of that book. Uh, so, I'm uh, yeah. I'll read that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah that's a good I, it sounds like right up my alley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, man. Last question from me. Where can people, uh, where do you want them best to follow you at? Oh, yes. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram, Atticus Poetry. Um, Two I, T's, right? A -T -T? Yeah, A-T-T-I-C-U-S. Um, poetry. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm Googleable, but yeah, you can look cool, up man. Poet Coffee. You can look up um, the Spark Journal, yeah. but I'll send you one and... Um, yeah, whatever, you, whatever you like and, and hit me up DMs. I'm, I'm, I'm always around. All right, man. Yeah. Appreciate you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right, brother.